We'll ignore the armor. Ooh. Admiral Hackett. How do you have this email address? Our scans in the um, Amada system has turned up something we thought you should see. The final location of the wreckage of the SSV Normandy. Um, I'm... Right, okay, so... Uh, red. I'm going to leave these ones until we actually meet them and tell them about the fact that we're alive. But these bits and pieces we can... Uh, armor. Armor. We can look through that stuff. I think we'll leave these. I don't think... Okay, Kasumi and... Okay, Zaid. Um, okay, this is from something we might pick up. Um, the MSV Rosalie... A survey ship with, with Cerberus connections has gone missing. The survey team was field testing a new prototype. The Hammerhead planet-sized... Planet, planet, planet-sized? Planet-side exploration rover. In addition, scientists Dr. Manuel Gais and Dr. Robert Oloy are aboard the MSV Rosalie and conducting research for us. We need you to find the ship, her survey team, and the doctors. The MSV Rosalie was last seen near planet Ziona. Um, Alista Isma Frontier. Uh, Zaid. We've reached an agreement with veteran mercenary Zaid Masani. You may know the name. Zaid has been involved in some of the best known and some utterly unknown military operations in the Terminus systems and is feared as a ruthless and relentless bounty hunter. I felt you might need a man with his skills on your mission, so I arranged to have him join you. You will find him on Omega, or Omega, where he's wrapping up his current bounty. Don't worry about his fee. I've taken care of that personally. Okay, that's probably someone we should be picking up then. And we can pick up these new things about things like ooh, new codex entries. Okay, oh, these are things. Oh, I probably I'll get distracted by rise of the alliance, political economic. Oh, right. And what am I even looking for? Um. Oh, we can't go in there. A scientist is required to use the technical laboratory. No, 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 no. Hello. I'm Yeoman Kelly Chambers. I've been assigned as your administrative assistant. I'll manage your messages and help you monitor the crew. And I must say, it's such an honor to work under you, Commander Shepard. Uh, thank you. The pleasure is mine. I'm glad to have you on the team, Miss Chambers. Please, call me Kelly. I can't really say no, considering... Yes, it's like, oh no, I, I don't fraternize with my crew. <laughs> yeah, I just hope she hasn't watched the last Let's Play. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, Kelly. Anything else? Uh, how's the crew? Is there anything I should know? Joker would like to speak to you on the bridge. Anything else, Commander? Uh, no, that's thanks. Be I'll be here if you need anything. So I'll go and chat with her. With him. With him, yes, Joker. Joker is a him. He has a beard. Um, hmm. Not a new codex. Yes. I think we'll do a quick once around chat with people. We might actually do a bit more. I don't know. Yes, Shepard. Okay, let's talk. A mm, no, thank That's you. That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. Joker! Can you believe this, Commander? It's my baby! Better than new! It fits me like a glove! And leather seats! <laughs> Military may set the hardware standard, but on a first gen frigate, they could care less if the seats breathe. Civilian sector comfort by design. Reproduction is not intended to be perfect, Mr. Moreau. Seamless improvements were made. And there's the downside. I liked the Normandy when she was beautiful and quiet. Now she's got this thing I want to talk about. It's like ship cancer. <laughs> the ship is just a copy. We can trust them for now. Enjoy it, Joker. If we're stuck here, we might as well let them pamper us. Uh, does it breach uniform regs if I get that on a cruise shirt? Because this is my favorite, you have no choice. Choice ever. <laughs> Technically, this is a civilian ship. I'm probably lucky you're still wearing pants. <laughs> yeah, I'll save that for the off-hour cameras. Have an AI watch me 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I already think this is better Operation than the first one. With our skew, compensating. Yes, oh, Shepard. Hey, let's talk about you. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? Uh, you and Joker. How are you getting along with Joker? Mr. Moreau does not trust me. It offends him that I am installed aboard his ship's computers. <laughs> yeah, the last Normandy did just fine without an AI reminding me the airlock is ajar. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. 
Um, I think I'll head off at that point. Logging you out, Shepherd. Let them uh, let them squabble, shall I? Um, do you realize you do realize you don't actually have to run at this point, right? <sighs> I had to. He's got a goofy run. Is he here as well? Yes. What's this area of the ship? This is the armory where small arms are maintained and upgraded. Okay, I can. Using Omni Tool, computer aided design and manufacturing, we have the capability to manufacture several new models. Okay, right. Um, that's powerful. This, uh, three shots with each pull of the trigger. Oh dear. Wow. Um. Uh, yes, I just feel bad. I just I don't not bad. Um, no. Well, the only ones we've got are the. Huh. I think I'll stick with the basic weapons for one more mission and until I pick up another more kind of something just flashed up at me that I could have a gander at. No, okay. I think I'll wait until I get another weapon. Ah, Jacob. You have a lot of weapons. And I think at that point I'll start dealing people out. Um, I'll start having a look at other weapons. I'm guessing you've got the same options, have you? Oh no! Oh, because I don't have a shotgun! Right. I think the eviscerator is probably better, which is why he's already equipped with it. And you don't have any options. Poor Miranda. But she's, she's the biotic person in this one, so she's not going to have the huge range. No. Commander, there hasn't been time to really settle in and take stock. I want to say that working with you is a great opportunity to do something that matters. It's a privilege to serve on the Normandy, Commander. You remind me a little bit of Caden. <laughs> Being on the Normandy, it's a risky assignment. You may change your tune if we end up like the original Normandy. Maybe. As long as the elusive man walks his talk. And you do the same, I'll do my best to make sure we succeed. That's been the condition for my service so far. I have issues with certain actions Cerberus has taken in the past. What actions? What has Cerberus done to make you nervous? A lot. They've been called terrorists, and with good reason. Doubt you can find a more checkered past. But if the Collector threat is real, and we do something about it, Cerberus will be remembered differently. Or we'll all be tried and executed. Can't count on people thinking about it as hard as I have. Hmm. Well, it's good to have you on board. I look forward to working with you, Mr. Taylor. Likewise, Commander. Let me know if you need anything. Okay, um, what's through here? The briefing comes through. So that's... Ooh, what's here? What's this area of the ship? This is the FTL communications room. In addition to interfacing with the FTL comm network, Normandy is fitted with a quantum entanglement communicator linked to the elusive man's office. This allows lag-free communication even when you operate off the comm grid. Uh, how would you use quantum particles to translate information? Um, oh, it'd be it'd be very similar to, to using light, assumably. But then you get the the, uh, the the Heisenberg is it Heisenberg or Heidenberg Heiden, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, where you've got no idea of what the mass of it of the particle is. Is it the mass? No, it's the momentum. You can't know the momentum if you know the position. So you don't know where it's going if you know where it is. Which is a slight problem if you're trying to send it somewhere, because you know where it. Mm, so it wouldn't work. But I assume it'd be a very similar process to kind of digital with light, where it fl kind of basically flashes very, very quickly almost. And you do it very sim similarly with quantum, surely? Can you explain that? Because I'm confusing myself. I've never heard of a quantum entanglement communicator. How does it work? Come on. Essentially, two subatomic particles are created in an entangled state. One is installed here and the other in the elusive man's office. Right. When one particle occupies a given quantum state, its entangled partner will always enter the opposite state, no matter the distance between them. Uh, uh, the of our particle, that alters the state of the elusive man's. This allows us to send data in the form of quantum bits. Uh, entanglement doesn't work that way. Not, well, not exactly. As far as I understand it, quantum entanglement is um, two particles 
are related, so they can be the same. I think that, that's what I've heard is that they're more likely to be the same. Um, but uh, the, the principle still stands. If we change the quantum state of our particle, then the quantum state of the other quantum particle will also change, which means you can translate information that way. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That's far more sensible than what I was proposing originally. Yeah, that does sound useful. Why aren't these used everywhere? Each quantum pair costs nearly as much as a COM relay and can pass only one quantum bit of data at a time. In addition to the cost and bandwidth issues, the system is strictly point to point. To contact a hundred different worlds, we would need to manufacture and install a hundred entangled pairs. Yes. One link to each world. That's all for now. Yes. That, you out, Shepard. That does sound bad. And not not bad, but just expensive bad. So no one would really have the money to do it. Apart from the illusive men, it seems.